Off the Lane is a 501c3 established in 2019 for artists and by artists. Since our inception, we have had nearly 150 young creatives go through our programs and are looking forward to an exciting year ahead. Our outreach and educational programs aim to provide a community, support system, and a home base to artists looking to transition from student to thriving professional. We believe that what sets us apart from other programs is the individualized attention that each artist receives throughout their time in the program and beyond. We often say that once you've gone through one of our programs, you're part of the family. Our entire team at Off The Lane is incredibly grateful for your support, generosity, and passion for the safe space that we've created. And with that, Hey guys, welcome to Empower Artists. Welcome to Empower Artists. Welcome to Empower Artists. Welcome to Empower Artists. here to really honor Annie. Yeah. Our Annie, yes. I mean, Off the Lane is like connected to so many wonderful things. Their mentorship program, which you're going to hear more about, and of course, Boost, B-O-O-S-T, which I finally realized is building occupational objectives and skills together, which is great. So it's so many other things. And then the Ann Ranking Scholarship Program, which is also really fabulous. Now, oh, and Greg Butler, who did the candle, and Caitlin, oh my gosh, and Caitlin Carter. I'm like, you know, I'm just so, I'm levitating. I'm so excited about being here tonight and, to, and, and honoring all of you. Okay, so here's the thing. I just want to tell you a little story about Annie and me, because I first saw Annie on stage in Pippin. I went to see the show October the 22nd. It was the night before it opened in 1972. It was a Sunday night, and I went to the last preview, which they said was like one of the greatest performances ever. And the show opened the next day. And from, and I was in like the cheapest seat you could possibly have. I was on a school trip, sat in like the last row of the second balcony, and spotted those big eyes. I thought, that's the girl, that's, she's amazing. I I just love her so much. And then a year and a few months later, it was December 17th, 1973, it was a Sunday, and a Monday, I was casting over here, and I saw this girl, and she had no makeup on, but all of a sudden she started to dance, and I went, oh, that's my favorite dancer, oh my god, that's the girl from Pippin, I can't believe it. So I was like this with Annie the whole time. We were dressing roommates, we laughed so hard all the time, we were kind of glad we didn't have you know, like our own songs, because we never had a good voice. We were like always hoarse from laughing so hard. <laughs> always. Because when you think about Annie, you think about that laugh. You think about her extraordinary talent, first of all. But you think about her laugh, her smile, her generosity. And she was a girl from a big family. So I really related to that, because she and I are both from the family of six kids. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're making everything a family through Off the Lane. Everything is connected to Annie and connected in that big, huge family way that she had of embracing people. And she loved mentoring people. I mean, even in our cast, she taught us all how to do a Broadway eye. So every time I do that, I think of Annie. 
the last time I saw her, I was wearing these shoes, so I wanted to wear them tonight. She said, oh, you've got me and my baby shoes on. Where do you get them? I said, oh, Stuart Weitzman. You know, it's like I was always, Annie was always my idol. She was always incredible. I was honored to replace her in Chicago. Huge shoes to fill, you know, and it was just, she was just always loving and gracious and open, and that's what Off the Lane is like as well. So it's no accident that these two partnerships have come together. So, and you'll hear all about it from Mindy Cooper and so many other wonderful people tonight. So we're going to go on with the show. Because remember, in the Anne Rankin Scholarship, we are giving a scholarship to one lucky person who will not only, you know, be mentored and be part of a community, but we will also be helping them financially with housing and so many other things. And you're going to hear more about that later in the program. But first, we're going to have another Roxy who's going to be up here. Although now she's doing Velma. Usually people go from Velma to Roxy to Mama. But this girl went from 20 years of Roxy, and now she's doing Velma. So, you know, it's like, why do when you can overdo? And here she is, Bianca Merki. She's going to be singing with Tom Gallagher. But I have to ask you, so you have this extraordinary experience with with. Chicago, oh God, yeah. where you were doing it in Mexico City, right? And then all of a sudden, it's like, no, be on Broadway. Exactly. That's when they found me in Mexico City. In Mexico City. And then they sing, I sing out, Louise. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I was doing a show in Mexico. Gary found me. Oh. Gary and Walter Bobby. And so they said, well, why don't you come over and let's try you out here. And so I would do... I would study the script in English during the day, and I would do the show in Spanish at night. Ooh. And then the day came, and I flew over, and then I had four days to, to rehearse, and I was right Butler put me in the show. And, oh, and so then a lot of a lot of you, that's why it's so crazy this evening, seeing all your faces and just all that. I just celebrated. We're the same dream. Yes. Yes. Do you dream in, in Spanish or in English? Some nights in English, some nights in It's up to your husband. It's up to my husband. No. <laughs> no, but I, I just celebrated 20 years of doing Roxy this month. This month. October 24th. And then this big, fat, scary challenge popped into my lap. And its name is Phil McKelly. <laughs> and I never met him. And I never met him so lucky. So honored to be here. So honored. So honored. Well, we're honored to have you tonight. So, there, I, I thought of this song. I chose this song. There, there, yeah, that's good. Um, so this song, I because of Annie, I think of Annie and I think Warren dancer and a lot of dancers are in the house right you know and so it's not an easy path it's not but we love it so much this is what we chose to do and Annie in her life in her on her journey she was tested and and she went through lots of obstacles and whatever she went through in her journey but she taught us never to give up never to give up and 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 that's her legacy and she Arrived and she shined, you know, throughout all of it. So this song, I imagine am singing it to to all of you and to the young generations trying to fight for this dream because it's so hard sometimes emotional and all the things that happen to us, um, our scars and our our the pain, and it's hard to let go and we live with it. So this. That's why I chose this. Thomas Gallagher, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, my love. Joy 
and your gentle wind to keep them from running wild. They can kick dirt in your face, dress you down, and tell you that your place is in the middle when they hate the way you shine. I see you tucking on your shirt, trying to hide inside of it, hide how much it hurts. Blend our laugh while they can, let them spin, let them scatter on the wind. I've been to the moon. I've seen how it ends, and the jokes of men. You get discouraged, don't you, girl? It's your brother's world for a while longer. You gotta dance with the devil on the river and beat the stream. Call it living a dream. Call it kicking the ladder. They come to kick dirt in your face, call you weak, and then displace you after carrying your baby on your back across the desert. I saw your eyes behind your hair. but I met her backstage doing, she was like getting her hair, she was in the show, I was getting my hair done because of Steve and Keo, we all loved him so much. And yeah, and we just started to talk and she was just so fabulous and then I saw her at different events and she is the one who put this all together with Off the Lane and the Ann Ranking Scholarship Program. So right now, I'd love to bring up my buddy, Mindy Cooper. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can't riff like Mary Lee Henner. I, I wrote a speech. I'm going to read it. Um, it starts like this. I think that most of us in this room moved to New York with a lot of hopes and dreams and maybe a couple dollars in our pockets, right? I did. And um, we found our way, didn't we? With, 
what I would say is luck and pluck. Now imagine moving here with an organization that helped support you with professional people that love the arts and, 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 and a community of people that help nurture and support you as you get here. That's off the lane. It's a young organization devoted to this mission with a robust community of passionate mentors created to help young artists of all kinds achieve their goals by being surrounded, supported, and mentored in so many ways. When, we, when Anne Ranking left us in January, we all know she left a huge abyss. So many of us were grieving the loss of this amazing person who, among other things, believed so deeply in young talent and went the distance in every way to help artists find their way. At that time, we shared a lot of pictures and videos of, of Annie. Have you seen this one? Did you see this video? And one came across my desk, that had a very recent uh, interview. It was during the pandemic. And she talked a lot about her youth and moving to New York with hopes and dreams and just enough money in her pocket. Well, we know how that story ended. Um, she found her way. And I felt it was so important to create a legacy to further her profoundly passionate work in, in helping young artists. And off the lane with its rich resources of mentorship, workshops, and early career guidance, felt like the perfect place to create this scholarship program in Annie's name and her legacy. A legacy investing in hope for the future. So thank you all for being here and knowing how important Annie's work was and how, how it will, this legacy will flourish with an organization behind it that helps and nurtures and, and supports the young artists of that. Let's learn a little bit about a little bit more about one of the off the lane programs. It's a mentorship program. <laughs> Woo! Off the Lane's mentorship program. Connecting young creatives with New York City artists, resources, and community. When we launched March 1st of 2020, our goal was simple. Create a community of artists provide resources to support their creative aspirations, and help these artists transition from student to working professional. What we didn't realize was that as the world shut down and universities pivoted to remote learning, our program would be such a needed lifeline, inspiring and fueling artists during an unprecedented time. Now, over a year and a half later, this program is thriving. We've been able to provide worldwide accessibility to over 75 hopeful creatives. Wherever their move will be, New York City or beyond, our mentors and the offline community are here to empower artists with the confidence they need to take the next steps in their artistic journey. And that's one thing I love about the mentorship program is it's not just you and your mentee, it's really a community. And a lot of the stuff that um, I'm teaching them is, is there are things that, you know, I could remind myself. Of. So it's definitely a two-way street where I'm giving them something, but they're also giving back to me. My first mentee uh, was based in Australia. She had been getting her degree in America um, and had gone back to Australia after graduating. And it has been so rewarding to see her succeed in our industry, utilizing the tools uh, that we've worked on together throughout the Offline Mentoring Program. I had an amazing mentor, and she was so nurturing and fun and talked about everything under the sun. The mentorship program made me feel so supported. I would recommend the mentorship program for anybody that's looking to move to New York City and hoping to get into the arts industry. I personally met a lot of great and caring people along the way who have offered so much great advice. I'm really happy that I participated in the mentorship program because not only did I learn a bunch of wonderful things about being an adult and being an artist, but it was just really nice to have an impartial person to communicate with and bounce ideas off of as I was going through a really, really transitional period in my life, graduating college as a musical theater major.
Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jillian Shirelli, and I am the secretary of the board of directors for Off the Lane, and also the program co-chair for the mentorship program. Um, first of all, I got a question for everybody out there. Do you guys know this song? NYC just got here this morning. Three bucks, two bags, one B. You know that one? Great lyric to a song, right? And it was in the movie, and, but not great real life scenario. You know what I mean? Three bucks. We could all do with a bit more bucks in our pocket. You know, maybe. You know, someone to help us find a side hustle when we get to the city. Two bags? Well, you, where are you going to put those two bags? You need somewhere to live, you know? Some of us found our apartment on Craigslist and moved to Bushwick 15 years ago, and that was bad. So we could use a little help there. Um, and don't get me started on the one me thing. I mean, I love, you know, me against the world, but like, wouldn't it be great to like move to the city and have a built-in community of like-minded artists and no. someone to give you friendship and resources? <laughs> yeah! You're all shaking your head. Yes, Julian, yes. That's right. And that's what the mentorship program is all about. And that's all you that's all you need to get. That's why it's so important and why your donations mean so much to us because this program is completely free, which is just so amazing to give that opportunity to people. Speaking of, some mentees fresh off the boat, stars to be, if you will. We've got two performing tonight, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, talented, intelligent, beautiful women. Um, the first, uh, Samantha Roberts, she's coming up here first. Um, she is a singer and a writer, composer, actually. She is singing a song from her EP that um, is on all streaming platforms. Look it up. Um, it's called Begin Again. Um, and with that, here we go, Samantha! <laughs>
Now I wait until that day when I begin, 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 begin without you. to um, write this little speech, I didn't know I was going to be doing this in front of them. It didn't dawn on me. And um, I know there's a virtual audience out there, but um, I'm in front of my family, y'all. Um, so but I'm going to do what I do, okay? So anyway, for those of you who don't know, I'm one of two associate choreographers for the Broadway show Chicago along with another of our board members, Mr. Gary Chris. <laughs> Legendary, look him up. Um, and let me just say, Chicago is a gift that keeps on giving. And I am very grateful to Anne Reichen because she gave me this gift, a gift that changed my life. Now, even with that, I'm an actor. And sometimes actors, we need to be jobs. And a B job, if you don't know, is a job we do when we're not doing our A job, which is acting. So I have an amazing B job that I love so much with all of my heart, and I didn't even know I would because this is so outside of my life. I work for Timothy J. Candles. It is a private company in Los Angeles, California, run by Timothy J. Sullivan. He is the owner and founder and a legend in his own right in L.A. At this candle shop, I wick, I clean, I stuff, I package, and I make some of the best bows in the world. I'm here to tell you, kids, I did not know I could make a bow until I went to this candle shop. And I'm here to tell you, they are becoming legendary. I mean, she double bows, too. I mean, it's fierce, it's fierce. I don't toot my horn about a lot of things, but I'm going to toot my horn about that one, okay? <laughs> um, so when, you know, our fundraising committee, uh, we were brainstorming about ideas for raising money. I thought, oh my God, we can do a candle for Annie. And then my two worlds collided. So I called Peter Talbert, Annie's husband, and told him my idea, and he agreed and gave it his blessing. And Peter also collabed with um, Timothy J and myself, and we made this fragrance. We mixed this fragrance. I asked Peter, I said, what are Annie's, some of her favorite smells, fragrances, what are things she doesn't like, what are her favorite colors? And Timothy J is like a wizard. So between the three of us, we came up with a mix of floral, powder, rose, because Annie loved roses, mimosa, and orange blossom. And we didn't have to go, go very far when it came time to name the candle. Because I thought to myself, you know, we could do this in Annie's own words. Annie would always say the joy is in the words. 
and no one worked harder than Dan Rankin on any measure. So, thus the name Annie's Joy. Um, this candle is for a limited time. From now until December 31st, 75% um, of the proceeds will go to the program. And I just want to say this on a personal note. We know Annie's spirit, her heart, her joy, her talent, it was, it reached out into the entire world. The beautiful thing is, Timothy J is a huge fan of Annie. Rankings. Yeah. And he had such, such a love, love and respect. respect. It wasn't, it wasn't something, something, you know, I didn't, I didn't find someone, someone who didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. He knew who she was. And he said to me, I want to be a part of this. I do not want one cent from this. The only thing I want is to cover the um, cost of the materials. Wow. So that's it. So wow. that's on Tim. And I so love this man. He is a giver amongst many men. Um, so the other thing I want to say is, you see, you can get the candle. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, let me just make sure I got points in there. I'm not going to make that point. I'm going to move through that. And then all I'm going to say now is it is holiday season. That's my, yeah, that's how my head goes. That's how my head goes. Uh, 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 uh. Now to the point. So it's the holiday season, and it's the time for gift giving. And I just want to say this candle would be an amazing gift. And also... If you find yourself in trouble and you need someone to wrap and make fabulous bows, <laughs> call a boy. Gregory's not lying. I, I didn't realize there was such, the bow took such skill, and I was tasked to take photos of the candle, and I opened the candle and pulled it out and lit it and wanted to wrap the bow bow back up and it just didn't look the same and I'm like, Gregory, how do you make the bows? <laughs> Oh my god, I have to say this. When I came in and saw the bows, I was going to redo them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I tried. I tried. I love it. Uh, there's a lot of love in those bows. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I don't even know if I introduced myself when I came up before. I am Crystal Malukas. I'm president of the organization. Thank you for being here. <laughs> about the Boost program. Um, so a little background on mentorship. Um, it launched, I think, like a week before the world shut down. <laughs> um, and it was it was meant to be a virtual program, which, which was awesome. Um, and we were able to get a lot of mentees involved and a lot of mentors to be involved because but he was doing anything. <laughs> and, and the support was, was needed on both sides as far as the mentor and the mentee. And we had a couple of applications come in, and they didn't quite fit the mold of what our mentee was. They were already in New York, so they didn't need to know about New York. Um, but they needed a boost. They needed, you know, they needed some career guidance. And so we decided, because we had all this time, to create a new program. Um, and that's Boost. We've been working on it for about a year, a year now. Ayana Bay and Jillian Vitko are our co-chairs. We like to uh, refer to them as our, as our cool, fun ants. Um, they are incredible, and I'm so excited to see where they take this program, because it is so important for those artists that are here one to two years and just you know need that community and need that boost in their career um, to go to the next steps. Um, so, to learn a little bit more about Boost, uh, we'll play a little video for you. Thank you. Boost is a program for artists who have been in the city, in New York City, for at least a year kind of found a bit of their footing but maybe struggling with their career trajectory or just kind of need some perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're here to be your think like adult accountability partners. Or career therapists. Yes. yes. In quotes, because we're quotes. not licensed therapists. We are not. <laughs> but we've been through we've been through it. Yes. So yes, we, we can we can give some insight into the fact that it is hard and you will need some encouragement and we're happy to give that to our boosters. I think in the process of doing Boost, um, 
I realized that I got so, I had in the past gotten so caught up in um, achievement um, and accolades and things like that and, uh, you know, <laughs> the politics of the business that I had completely forgotten why, it got, why I had started pursuing this in the first place. Um, and they really helped me focus on what it is that I care about. Um, and that has helped me immensely. A lot of my program was not just about where to knock on the door and say, hi, can I take your classes? Can I perform with y'all? Can, can I hop in? Um, but a lot of it was, okay, let's figure out your own stuff first. Like you need to figure out you as a person and give yourself that rest before you can, you know, step up in your career the way that you actually want to. I really felt disorganized when it came to what I was trying to create. And they were just such a great resource for helping me start to figure out, okay, how am I going to bring this idea to life? How am I going to bring the script to the screen? And that was really what I wanted to focus on with them. And they kept me focused. And I think what was so cool about having these mentors, these vets in the industry, was that they were able to really guide me along and give me those goalposts to achieve. And it made something that seemed completely unachievable and completely out of my scope and area of expertise into something that I could actually get to. And so I feel like if I didn't have them on this journey, I, I wouldn't even be on this journey that I am right now. We're going into our second year mm -hmm. of Booths, which is very exciting. Yes. Um, and as we are growing, we're learning a lot, and we also are looking to expand the program. Yes. Right now, the co-chairs do the intake, they, we do all the meetings, we customize the plans, and we can only have so many boosters at a time because we don't want to overload ourselves. We want to really be able to focus on each individual person's needs. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping yes. soon <laughs> to be able to accept more boosters by having boost advisors. And we're really excited because we would love to grow boosts in that way for year two. Give it up for Boost. Have you guys had a Boost Bellini? You can get one after the show. Um, great, so we have another mentee performance which we're so excited about. Uh, Rachel Sabo Hedges. Said it right. Um, she is an actress and a singer and a fight choreographer. Cool. Um, and she will be singing a song called Someday by Jenny Gary. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. I feel so humbled and honored to be here in a room of so like full of so many. Broadway baddies, for lack of a better term. You guys really are iconic, and like I, I truly feel so honored. The only thing kind of putting my nerves at ease is that we all just went through the pandemic together. We were all so alone, and and we felt so alone, and and but we were all in it together, and I think that that says something, and it gives us more power now, and we're all in this room, and. And that's kind of why I chose this song, Someday. Jenny Gearing wrote it during the pandemic, and it kind of talks about, like, what we were all going through. So I think it's pretty relatable. Yeah. Our family is doing fine. <laughs> Thanks to Netflix and to wine. And while our kids miss seeing friends, no one can say how this thing ends. And I know it sounds a bit bizarre, pandemics being what they are. But hear me out. But I'll miss this when at last it's through this unending time with you well someday not today but someday someday for 
down in Tampa, got to see what Annie was like and how important it was to her to give back, to bring people down there, to share any knowledge that you have, your stories, your, your expertise in something. You got to watch these kids perform, and it was so important to her. So that's why this was just such a natural fit. So before we, you know, give out our big Anne Ranking Scholarship, um, let's see a little bit about our dear Annie. In the film The Red Shoes, the ballerina Victoria Page is asked, Why do you want to dance? Her answer is, Why do you want to live? 
For Anne Reinking, dancing was not only life, it was passion, joy, storytelling, collaboration, fun, generosity, and a loving community who adored her as much as she cherished and nurtured them. Annie's life was also about sharing, especially by teaching and mentoring young artists. She always remembered what it felt like to dream big, move to New York, make her place in the world, and make those dreams a reality. Off the Lane is enormously proud to launch the Anne Ranking Scholarship Program, awarding a grant to an aspiring dancer seeking to move to New York City to fulfill their dreams. With this grant also comes guidance through a one-to-one -one mentorship by an industry veteran, as well as educational events and resources, accountability check-ins, and a supportive, caring community. Annie said, the dancers who have heart will be the stars. Annie lived from her heart. Growing up in Seattle, she began performing professionally at the age of 12. Arriving in New York City as an awestruck 18-year-old, she joined the corps de ballet of Radio City Music Hall, the second national tour of Fiddler on the Roof, then right to Broadway with Cabaret, Pippin, which began her professional and personal relationship with Bob Fosse, a chorus line, Chicago, Dancing, and the list goes on and on. Her career as a multi-Tony Award-winning dancer, singer, actress on stage and screen, choreographer, teacher, and advocate was not only stellar, Annie was beloved in the worlds of Broadway, ballet, film, and all forms of dance. Always, she had a focus on future generations. Her work for the Broadway Theatre Project changed the lives of thousands of young performers. Annie's impact was so vast because she had the gift to truly connect with people. She'd really look at you. You'd feel her warmth and humor and genuine interest, whether you knew her well or she was just meeting you in passing. Since Annie left us, the Anne Ranking Scholarship Program has been developed with the tireless work of her friends and colleagues. Its mission is simple, to carry on her passion, humility, gift of mentorship and legacy to the next generation of diverse, talented artists with an adjudication process that values transparency and inclusion. Annie would be so proud of the care that went into every aspect of the planning. We are so grateful to you all for your support. Not only will it directly help set these young artists on a path to success, but it will make sure that the same happens for so many young artists of the future. Annie was recently asked, what advice would you give to your 18-year-old self? Her answer was, trust that voice inside of you. It will always tell the truth. That voice inside of Annie has inspired all of us to live our lives with joy, generosity, love, and truth, always giving a leg up to the next generation of artists. Thank you, Annie. who's watching us on Zoom will find it in their hearts to contribute and donate to this incredible organization and cause. And everybody in this room, I hope that you do it as well. And buy the candles, buy in bulk. <laughs> buy in bulk. That's why if you take anything from me tonight, take two things. Motion is the lotion. Motion is the lotion. <laughs> because let's face it, that's why everybody in this room looks so good. Motion is the lotion. And the second one is buy in bulk. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, you know, we're. It's funny because I kept thinking, what is this night going to be like? Like Greg. You, well, I, I did mine in reverse. I kept thinking, oh, everybody's going to be crying. You, you can't cry when you think about Annie. I mean, you can privately and with each other, but there's something about her joy, her, her, her like smile and her face and that throaty laugh that just makes you want to like celebrate every single moment. And we're so lucky that we got to know her and to have her, even though it was for a very, very short time. 
She's a pretty incredible woman. Just unbelievable. Okay. So, um, I want to tell you about the winner of the Anne Ranking Scholarship. This, let me tell you something. First of all, I want to thank Bonnie Oda Holmesy. That's how you say her name, right? Yeah. I, I, she's got the coolest name because it's like Oda Holmesy. You know, but it's like, you know, like Oda Toilette or something. But no, Oda Holmesy. That's all I can think of. No, she's pretty fabulous. And you're on Zoom. And so thank you so much because she's really responsible. And just putting the adjudicators together and all the people, we had so many Zooms and so many things were going on. I, I don't even know if we would have gotten this much work done ex if there hadn't been a pandemic. But it was great to be so current with everybody and everybody, you know, on, in their Zooms in their home and stuff. So it really was has been a labor of love and everybody coming together and putting their best foot forward and putting egos aside and everything else. So it's really been a special, you know, I'm just like so honored to be part of it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm reading this part because I don't want to make a mistake. She grew up in Yuma, Arizona, began dance training at 11. She graduated with a BFA in dance from University of Arizona School of Dance, and she got to perform works choreographed by Larry Keegan, uh, Keegan, how do you say his name? I don't know. Keegan, uh, Martha Graham, and George Balanchine. She spent summers training and gaining inspiration from Hubbard Street Dance Chicago, Paul Taylor Dance Company, Perry Mansfield, Mansfield and Ata, Ata 9, 8, 9, uh, it must be 8, 9, like pipes, and whatever. Um, <laughs> after beginning her professional career with Modern American Dance Company, she decided to take a chance, move to New York to pursue her dreams. Dreams. She's excited to explore the city, watch live theater again, and make new connections. Please welcome Viviana De Santiago. <laughs> scholarship winner, I was filled with gratitude and joy. I couldn't help but get emotional because to me this award represents hope. The past year with the pandemic and the uncertainty with the arts tested all of us. Um, we needed that hope more than ever to keep creating and sharing. Um, as we all know, an artist's life is challenging yet incredibly fulfilling. We pack up all our belongings and decide to move to this wonderful city in order to chase our dreams. To think Anne Ranking, the icon and legend we know her as, was once new to the city, trying to navigate the trains like I am right now, <laughs> is inspiring. <laughs> I'm thrilled for the year ahead, learning from my new mentor and joining the Offaline community. I have faith that opportunities will arise, and I have hope for my future. Winning this award is the greatest welcome to New York City I could have ever asked for. Thank you so much, Off the Lane, and thank you, Anne Ranking. This is amazing. Before you go, we have a special person who wants to come up and tell you something. Is Joe and Terry here? So I'm very honored to be here tonight, and I do have to thank Jen and Mindy and the entire team at Off the Lane. First, what you're doing is so impressive, but to reach out and suggest a partnership with Steps on Broadway was a stroke of genius and a no-brainer. <laughs> and a no-brainer. And uh, everyone in this room knows what Steps on Broadway is. Many of you have spent hours and hours and days and years and years, yes. At Steps. I'm not sure that you all realize the connection between Anne Reinking and Steps all these years. So the founder of Steps on Broadway, Carol Palmgarten, in 1979, started a one-room studio at 56th and Broadway called Steps on Broadway, and Anne Reinking was one of the first faculty members there. Wow. 
And these two beautiful, creative, and very generous ladies became very fast friends for years. Uh, vacationed together. Um, and fast forward, May 2019, Cheetah Rivera Awards. Anne and Ben Vereen are the co-hosts. And Carol Palmgarden was honored on the 40th anniversary of Steps on Broadway as an ambassador for the arts. It was the first time they had been reunited in years because she hadn't been back in New York. And the moment on stage was so, many of you were there. I'm looking at you now, knowing many of you were there. It's the, she got a standing ovation. It was a beautiful, beautiful moment. And sadly, since that time, we've lost both of them. So to make that phone call and say, what about a partnership? You know, what about, you know, something like this? It was perfect. And I know they are both right now smiling down, so excited for the people that are in this room, and so excited for you. Because everything about this has been about community. And you, you probably already realize this, but they will share that every experience you have, your community is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm so excited that we're going to welcome you into our community at Steps on Broadway. We're going to, we're going to share with you. We're going to open our arms and let our dance home become your dance home. So for a year, you will be able to come take 10 classes a week, anything you want to do. For a year at Steps on Broadway, we want to be part of this journey. We want to be part of this community so that we will all continue to celebrate you for years and years to come. I'm so proud of you having stuff from the right for a year, you've got to be like showing up for things. <laughs> you should have a banner and a crown next year and everything else, or shoes, whatever. For sure. Okay, we have a real treat because Bianca, their king, and also Brenda Braxton. <laughs> they're so fabulous. Oh, Smoky Joe's Cafe, so many things. Ten years doing Velma. They were Velma and Roxy together. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And um, so they're going to do a little something for us. And then um, Jen Donahue and um, Crystal, uh, I always say her say, Lucas, right? Did I say that right? Yeah, Lucas. Yeah, well, we're Greek. Yeah, my mother's name was Cali uh, Nicoletta Kaliotopoulos. So, but I wasn't sure. Anyway, um, they're going to come up and tell you a little bit more about something else later. But right now, Bianca. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> I wanted to, um, so again, I am so honored to, to be here and such a privilege to have crossed paths with Anne. I can't, I can't believe it when I first came, um, George Hamilton was Billy, and he had, had knee surgery. So, uh, Annie had to come in and re-choreograph both Reach for the Gun, because I couldn't sit on his, his knee. And so that's, that was my first encounter with her personally and then all her stories and her anecdotes and her um, advice and her guidance and her tips and everything. I remember one Christmas I gave her a rosary with the flowers for Get Me Nuts and, 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 the, and the beats and that was her thing. And every time the emails, Forget Me Not, I will never forget. What do I, when I was invited to this, what do I, what do I sing, what do I sing? So I asked Rob Fisher, who's not here with us, but he's here with us in spirit, and, and I said, Rob, because Rob mentioned that he was at um, Peter and Annie's house. This was last week. I, mean, I just finished working with, with uh, Rob on something. Ask Peter, what would Annie love? What would, what would she like? And this is what she said, what he said. Gone. All gone. It's good. Isn't it grand? Isn't it 
Isn't it great? Isn't it swell? Isn't it fun? Isn't it? Nowadays, there's men everywhere, jazz everywhere, booze.
friends with Annie, and it's only right that you should. <laughs> And this whole evening is such a testament to her because everybody, you could tell, everybody's in the same spirit. And you at home, I hope you donate. You know, I'm not donate. What am I talking about? I hope you, yeah, donate money. That's what I want. Mean. <laughs> we don't want your old toe shoes. We, want, we would love you to help us so that this can keep going and going and going. And the whole cast of over here, we've all gotten together and we're, we've got a big donation coming too. So just, everybody can pony up. Okay. So here's the thing. Buy candles. Buy in bulk. Buy in bulk. For sure. Okay, now I'd love to bring up, to finish off this evening, this fabulous evening, Jen Donahue and Crystal Malukas. For the support, I can. It, you can feel it. It's it's tangible. It's amazing. Aww. Yes. Oh, pinch Aww. myself. <laughs> it's happening, you guys. Um, special thank you to first of all to our board of directors. Um, Mustard Lane is the parent company of Off the Lane, and that's where the community actually started and why we started Off the Lane. Jen's worked with me for not eight, nine years. Nine. Nine yeah. years. Um, Jillian Sirali, She's worked with me. Uh, tw 12 years? Is that where we're at? We've been together a long time. She's secretary of the board. She works for me at Mustard Lane. Um, Nathan Sheffield, thank you for jumping on board and believing in what we're doing. It means so much. Um, advisory board, thank you for, for trusting us with this. Um, it's been really amazing to be a part of the development process, um, and this is just a special evening to celebrate it all. It's amazing. Um, special thank you to our sponsors. Um, most space is the beautiful space next door. Um, Mustard Lane staff, Urban Peach Catering, um, Christine Cole from Flawless. We're gonna have some sweets and treats from her. She's also got a fun silent auction item for wine tasting. Highly recommend that. Um, <laughs> Show Up Event Consulting um, has been helped out, sponsored some of the tech um, elements this evening. And We Are Volume, it's my husband's software company. He helped build the app that we used for the grant, which was awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Over to Jenny. Thank you guys so much. This has been honestly one of one of the greatest honors of my life to help build and develop this program. So thank you guys for trusting us. Peter, I know you're watching. Thank you so much for trusting us with this. <laughs> Mary Lou, thank you for being here. to say I'm I'm not gonna thank everyone that I'm supposed to but advisory board members you guys are amazing Bonnie thank you I know you're watching on zoom thank you so much for just jumping in and helping build and develop this this adjudication process it's been wonderful and it's been lovely getting to meet all of Annie's friends throughout this you guys thank you so much for being here um, I don't know if there's anything else I'm supposed to be saying right now, but maybe that, go have some dessert and cocktails. And thank you guys. Oh, oh, Mary Lou has one more thing to say. Of course. 
Um, I was going to say that, the, you know, when I was like, oh, the McVictors, that speech and everything, that this was the original Bob Fosse choreo choreography, but preserved by Anne Ranking, which had, she's, like, ridiculous, of course. Her choreography, no wonder she won the Tony and every award possible. But they were kind of coming up to the stage, so I didn't get that part in. But I wanted to make sure that you knew that, in case you didn't, for those of you at home. And thank you so much, and go eat, and go buy candles. Yeah. I know. Yeah. See you next year.